I just wanted to show you this because it's uh, since we're up at uh, six o'clock our time over here. I'll just pull the cursor over. There we are. This is about six o'clock our time. We were just uh, getting up, getting a screen set up, and all the rest of it. Um, and it's just a, a an example of how to identify which pairs are really the ones to focus on and which ones are those to ignore. Because since about that time, we've had very strong buying of the US dollar. And we've also had strong buying of the Canadian, uh, of the uh, Japanese yen, this magenta line. The red line is the dollar. And that has been counterbalanced by very strong selling of the Aussie dollar. It rose overnight, but since then we've seen it selling off very strongly, the blue line. And equally, you've got it over here. Now, I've got these on, I'll just check the time frames. This is on one minute, so that's pretty fast. This is on five, that's on 10, and this one's on 15. There we go. So we've got a nice spread. And what we're looking at always is those currencies or currency pairs which are likely to be moving and those which are not. And when you look at this, it's it's the beauty of the currency strength indicator is that it gives you all this visual information very very quickly and in a way that's very easy to absorb and it just gives you a highlight of where to look what's not moving and also more importantly the strength of what is the, the buying and selling the strength of buying in the japanese yen is extremely strong at the moment this is on 15 minute Yes, we've got a pause point over here on the faster time frame, but it's rising strongly up into overbought here. It's getting up into overbought here. But the strength of that buying has been literally as uh, denoted by the angle of, of incline, if you will. That tells you how strong that buying is. And it's, it's matched with strong buying of the US dollar. That's why all the majors are selling off at the moment. And the other, obviously, the, the counterbalance to that is what you're then looking for is something that has equal opposition in terms of selling pressure. And it's pretty clear that the Aussie is one, New Zealand dollar is another one, and the euro, we're seeing strong selling of the euro right now. So you're spoiled for choice in terms of identifying which pair uh, you might wish to focus on. Now, obviously, what's happening right now is because we've had this very strong buying and very strong selling in those pairs, there is also now the opportunity to consider a potential reversal because the dollar is getting up into very strongly overbought, as is the yen. Down at the bottom here, we've got the euro starting to flatten off a little bit. You can start to see the New Zealand dollar, the Aussie dollar, they're starting to curl up a little bit. They're starting to rise a little bit over here. So we have a potential reversal in place. And the other point about the CSI is it also tells you which pairs not to focus on. Because if you look at the dollar and dollar and the yen, if you go and look at a dollar yen on chart on, on the faster time frames, there is no price action there. The, the, uh, the chart will be in congestion. Why is it in congestion? Well, because the two are traveling in the same direction. So if you've got two currencies traveling in the same direction, there's no differential momentum. There's no differential force. You can think of it in many, many different ways. The, the, the example I always use is one of two trains leaving a, a, a station. If they're both traveling out of, a, of two different platforms, maybe they've got slightly different speeds, but there is very little differential speed between the two. So therefore, uh, there is no, in terms of a currency pair, that currency pair is not going to be moving very quickly. Whereas when you look at the other uh, pairs or currencies where you've got one moving in one direction and the other moving in the opposite direction at equal speed, then clearly there is huge diversion and you're going to get a very strong trend. You can take the same principles. Look at the uh, Swiss franc here and the Canadian dollar. There's not going to be much movement there. Why? Because they're moving up together. They're moving up again here. If you looked at two currencies which are falling strongly, the, New the Aussie dollar and the New Zealand, there wouldn't be much divergence there because they're moving in the same direction. So the trend is, is there, it's going to be in congestion. There might be a minor trend, but it's going to be very, very weak indeed. So when you, when you look at the CSI, it is a question of giving you all that information, of teasing out where to look, what trends are underway. You might look at crosses where, for example, a currency crosses over. In, in this particular move for the dollar, we had the Aussie falling, we had the dollar rising. That may be the point at which you wanted to get in. You look for crosses, you look for, in other words, you're looking for a trend that is already underway. Whereas, uh, because I'm greedy and I like to get in early and I'm prepared to put more money on the table to, to 
to gain a bigger reward, I'm always looking at the extremes. I'm always looking down at the bottom here, and I'm always looking up at the top here to see what is shaping up for a potential reversal. Then, of course, you're back to the chart to try and identify the buying that's coming in. Maybe you're seeing strong buying coming in on the, on the volume. Maybe you've got, uh, I don't know, you could have a volatility trigger appear, particularly at the open. And then you're looking for a potential reversal. But reversals come at a price. And the price is basically you have to set your stop loss that much wider because you've got to allow for all this buffering that goes on over here before that move actually gets underway. But get underway, it will at some point because this market is about one thing. It is about mean reversion. It's a market where, and it's really, I suppose, characterized, if you will, in a perfect way by the currency strength indicator itself. Because what you are seeing constantly in all time frames, whether it's a 15 second chart or a one minute chart or a, a daily chart or an hourly chart, doesn't matter. What you are seeing described visually is this constant process of moving from overbought to oversold and back again. And that's what the currency market is all about. It is about uh, risk and risk sentiment. It's about currency flows. Obviously, it's about the technical, the fundamental, the relational, pulling that all together. And that is all reflected in this constant oscillation up into overbought, down into oversold, up into overbought. Down. It's, it's a sinusoidal uh, graph, if you will, if you've ever seen an oscilloscope uh, in the electrical world, then you know what I mean. It, it's, it, it is, I'm not saying it's a perfect sinusoidal wave, but that is the principle. It is a wave of risk sentiment, which ebbs and flows constantly. And that is reflected in the constant movement from the top to the bottom and back again. And the strength of those is then reflected in how steep the angle of the line is. And, you know, this is one of the starting points. Let me pass back to Anna. And uh, I'll sort out some other charts and get them set up on this window.